Hello, welcome to the Monday, June 11th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. During this podcast, I often complain about vulnerabilities in devices. And of course, the Internet of Things is a huge topic these days. Microsoft is weighing in with an interesting paper that they entitled The Seven Properties of Highly Secure Devices. It really sort of describes seven common sense technologies that you should use if you do code for devices. Now, I think it's a little bit focused on probably the higher end devices like mobile phones and the like, but pretty much everything they are proposing does also apply to little things like famously IT cameras and the like. I in particular like hardware-based root of trust where you do have sort of an enclave to store secrets in, also certificate-based authentication and the ability to update automatically. The last one, the failure reporting, some people may take a little bit of exception on. What they're suggesting here is that devices should report software failures back to the manufacturer. Microsoft, of course, does that for a long time in Windows where they're collecting sort of debug reports if software fails on a PC, but of course, with the PC, the user has the option to intercept these reports and not send them. So I think this is a real good paper. And if you're not a developer, if you're not developing for devices, then this is certainly something to consider if you are purchasing devices in bulk and something to talk with your vendor about. Another hot topic recently, deserialization. And it has been kind of tricky to find deserialization vulnerabilities in the past, given that there weren't really any great tools for it. Well, the NCC group now came up with an extension for the Burp suite that targets deserialization vulnerabilities. They are calling it Freddy. Freddy comes with 35 modules and 88 different remote code execution payloads that allow you to look for these deserialization vulnerabilities in .NET or in Java. And crypto jacking certainly has been one of the big stories this year so far. Typically, you see JavaScript being injected into a website that then uses your browser to mine crypto coins or crypto coin miners are added to existing software as an unadvertised add-on. And while I don't agree with this, some people have even suggested that crypto jacking may not necessarily be illegal even if it's not advertised to the user. Well, the Federal Trade Commission now certainly put an end to this and stated that they are looking into crypto jacking and they're also asking the public to report any crypto jacking incidents to them. So this essentially crypto coin mining without your consent. And last week, I reported about some research that was done in order to figure out how many websites are still vulnerable to the recent Drupal vulnerability. Well, the Drupal team now came forward stating that the way this particular study was done was actually flawed and they may have vastly overstated the number of vulnerable systems. You may, of course, disregard this because Drupal sort of tries to protect their own reputation here somewhat, but they make a valid point. A lot of the recent studies that looked at how many sites are vulnerable looked at changelog.txt. This file should change with each version of Drupal. However, if you're applying the update, this file is not updated. So as a result, you can't really use changelog.txt in order to figure out if a particular site was patched or not. So this is a very valid point. And I should also add that if you do run an actual vulnerable Drupal site, it's 
probably already has been exploited. So just looking at the exploited websites probably gives you a better idea. Of course, for researchers, it's difficult to figure out if a particular site is vulnerable without actually launching the exploit, which of course crosses a line that researchers should not really come close to. And you may have noticed that we had some issues with the Internet Storm Center website this weekend. We had a massive hard drive failure from Saturday to Sunday night. And now luckily this was a low traffic time, but not a very convenient time to actually fix things. We are running out of our secondary data center now, so things should be mostly back to normal. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.